How's it going everybody? My name is Matt and today I'm bringing you a video all about overclocking. Now before we begin, I want to make one thing clear. This is not a tutorial on how to overclock. This is a video on explaining what overclocking is. On a side note, let me know in the comments if you do want to see me do a video on how to overclock. So let's begin. So I'll start off by covering some basics. Every CPU and GPU comes at a clock speed, with say 3.2 GHz or 1100 MHz, that kind of thing. Now this clock speed indicates how many cycles that component can perform per second. And generally the more cycles, the better because that's more work done. Now these CPUs and GPUs are guaranteed to run safely at their base clock. Say a video card could be 900 MHz or a CPU could be 3.2 GHz. They're guaranteed to run safely without overheating or crashing at that speed. What that means is that you could run it faster than that and still be safe, maybe with a little more heat or a little more voltage required. And that is exactly what overclocking is. Overclocking is a simple and free way of increasing the speed of your PC without much work. For a GPU, it's really pretty simple. You need to download a GPU software program like MSI Afterburner, EVGA, Precision X, Asus GPU Teak, one of those, and then basically you slide the base clock or memory clock to the right, increasing its speed. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Of course, more thought goes into it in balancing voltage, speed, and heat, but that is in a tutorial and this is just explaining what it is. Now, for your CPU, it's a lot harder. First of all, you can't use a software program on your desktop. You actually need to enter the BIOS, which is achieved by spamming the delete key as you restart your PC. Second of all, there are some requirements you need to meet in order to overclock your CPU. First of those requirements is that your CPU needs to be unlocked. Intel unlocked processors have a K at the end, and all AMD processors are unlocked. Second of all, you need adequate cooling. That could just mean that your room is really cold, so you can use a stock cooler, or you have an aftermarket cooler like a water cooler or a high-end air cooler. And lastly, you need a custom-built PC. If you buy a pre-built like Dell PC, and do not overclock that. That's not meant to be overclocked. The cooling is not there. You just shouldn't even mess with it. Only do it if you really know what you're doing, and it's your own PC, or it's from a custom-built PC company that allows you to overclock. If you meet those requirements, you can begin overclocking. Overclocking your CPU is basically messing with the frequency and the voltage until you find a nice balance where nothing crashes at all when you stress test. So is overclocking worth it? Well, that's really your decision. It depends person by person. I'm going to list the pros and cons so you can decide if the pros outweigh the cons or vice versa. So the pro of overclocking, of course, is speed. You're getting a higher frequency, which is more cycles per second which equates to faster rendering times and more FPS in games, which are both really good things. But the con with overclocking is heat. When you increase the frequency or the voltage, you generate more heat. Generating heat sometimes requires more aftermarket cooling, but it also decreases the lifespan of that component. It's not meant to run that hot, and it may decrease lifespan. You may not notice it. It may last until you upgrade, but it could break early on, and that would be due to your overclocking. So do you think that the risk is worth the reward? Let me know in the comments. So do I overclock? Well, yeah, I do. I have plenty of reason to, though. I overclock both my CPU and GPU. I overclock my CPU because I render a lot of videos and I play a lot of CPU-intensive games that could really use the extra speed. I overclock my GPU because it's not the highest-end GPU. It's a 660 Ti, and it doesn't max out all games, so I can use that extra bit of speed to help up the settings. Basically, if your PC is already maxing out all games at 60 frames per second, it's really not worth it to overclock. You're already getting what you need, and you may as well just keep everything the way it's supposed to be so you have no problems whatsoever. So in conclusion, overclocking is not for everybody. If you're already getting everything you need, overclocking isn't really worth the extra risk of maybe hurting your parts earlier on, decreasing their lifespan, or generating more heat in your PC. But for budget builds or builds that don't have the highest end parts, it's a really useful feature because you can get more performance by not spending any more money, which is really invaluable. If you like this video, please leave a like or a comment. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll catch you next time.